I was playing with the old render of this Alfa Romeo model. The original render was something like this. Everything is done in Blender. This is the model from my Blender Advanced course. And this background stuff was, I think, from Blender Kit. And these are also some other bonus models that I give on my Blender Advanced course. But I was thinking how to change this render in the fastest way. And here in Photoshop, I started to play with the generative fill. And just after a couple minutes, I turned it into this one, like from that to this image. It is super simple, but I just wanted to share with you. So as I said, this guy is from my Blender Advanced course. So I'm going to upload this video to my Blender Advanced course as well. Plus, we're going to change the render with AI. So it will be also in my AI for car design course. And I'm going to upload it to YouTube as well. So the point is, I will not go through this exact same image. I went to Blender. This is the model, by the way. And I just did a couple of new renders from different angles. And here they are on the Photoshop, like the side view, front quarter, and the rear three quarter. The reason I want to start from zero is you might face some funny situations while using Photoshop Generative AI. So basically I'm in Photoshop and maybe let's start with the side view. Let's see what we can do. I will just hit L for my lasso tool. Or you know what? Let's not use this. Let's go to select subject directly. So it more or less selected the car. But I don't want to touch the foreground now yet. So I will just hold shift to pick also the front area, like the foreground of the car. Maybe here also I want to remove this background, like the ground visible through the spoiler. By the way, I still like this car, like this reflection and the surfaces. I did a good job on this course. So I will hit Ctrl Shift I to select the other side, invert my selection, and we have the generative fill. Let's say ocean view from the rocky hill and hit generate. Sometimes it comes up with very, very bad results. That's why I wanted to do it in a video to see what it will come up with. Because AI, at least for now, is not, you just hit the button and everything is done perfectly. For example, as you see, it's not the best. This might be something. No, it doesn't work. I will generate again. And again, the results. Okay, this one, like on this side, I kind of like, but on the back, I don't like because it looks like the asphalt becomes the water. I want kind of like a division in between like we have on the left but it is acceptable so i'm gonna click to this empty area to remove it to make a new selection so i will go back to my background layer so i will have this select subject again and this time i want to already hit ctrl shift i to select outside and i will remove this inner part and also i'm gonna remove maybe this area i will also remove the left of the image the left side of the image so here I can generate again something like rocky ground on the hill looking at the ocean. So it is step by step, depends on the previous results, you are modifying the image. Okay, this is not good. I'm not convinced with any of them. So I will just generate again. And again, they are not the best results. So sometimes I'm not even 100% sure about it, but I will merge everything on top as a new layer. And then I will do my selection again. Sometimes it works better. Maybe it's just coincidence. I'm not sure. But as I experienced that, I will try it again. So I'm going to remove the left of the image. Rocky edge of the hill next to ocean. Let's see if it will give us some nice results. Okay, that might be interesting actually. Or this might be something. Okay, this is a little bit too much. But let's generate again. I like these results more. Especially the first one was not bad. Okay, this is a bit extreme. Maybe this is actually kind of cool. I like that there's the sun. There's like a little boat and... Okay, this one works. I like it. I will just remove this one. But first, again, I'm going to do this merging everything on top on the new layer. I will pick this and just generate a fill without writing anything. So it will remove this object, hopefully, from my image. But isn't this amazing? Like, you can have a very basic render from Blender rather than trying to find everything in 3D and adjust later on Photoshop like that. I, I find it pretty cool. So now on the foreground, I also want a couple of things. So I will just select like this and maybe with lasso tool, I'm gonna add like that a selection to say rocky ground as foreground. Actually, let's just say, let's cancel it because I wanna pick it only this much. And let's, first I wanna say only the rocky ground. Okay, if there was no gap like this, Actually, even this might be interesting, like the asphalt probably will crack soon and the car will be ruined, but, or something like that, maybe. Let's generate one more time to see other alternatives. Okay, that's interesting. Honestly, maybe this one too, like all of them has potential. I think I'm gonna pick this one, okay? This is a bit more like a foreground object, I like it. What else we can do to this render? Let's make the sky a bit more like sunny sky. 
Okay, it didn't make a lot of sun. Maybe it's because already bright, but maybe I should say add the sun or something. But other than that, I want to go like select an area here and let's say a small island in the ocean. Okay, it added a couple of islands. It's also not bad or oh, <laughs> that's not what I had in mind. A lot of boats instead of island. This might work too actually. That's maybe a bit bigger I was expecting. So let's see if it will give us some alternatives, but this would also work. Again, we got boats instead of islands or even like a plane. Okay, I think I will keep this one here. What else? Maybe let's just select this ground a little bit, something like that. And also here a little bit. I don't know, I will try to say like a wet asphalt. Let's see if it will be possible to give me some good results. Okay, these are not what I was hoping for. Let's try one more time. Maybe wet asphalt is not a good way to say. Because it kind of looks like a melted asphalt to me. <laughs> Maybe let's try to write something else. Um, water on the ground. Let's see if it will help. Wow, that's a huge thick water. Okay, this one maybe, you know. Or this one is like a big cracks on the asphalt actually. I just generated again by mistake, I think. Dreaming up a new background. Ah, right, this is just a tip, okay. Okay, actually like the blue water. This I like more, honestly. Or this, maybe. The other one was like, the, I still like this one. I think I will keep that one. So we can just play around with it a lot, as you see. Maybe it's getting even too much, but still I think the focus on the car is not that much craziness happening yet. After this point, I would just merge everything again. And if you don't know the shortcut, it's Shift, Control, Alt and E on Windows at least. And then I will hit Shift, Control, A for the camera roll filter. This part is actually related to my Photoshop for car design course as well, but it's more about sketching on Photoshop. I will go to presets here. And as you see, we have different options. I like this style cinematic. And if you just scroll your mouse, you can see different moods that can be added to your render. They are a little bit too strong, but we can dial down a little bit. Let's see first, what do we like? For example, I guess I like this one a little bit more bluish. So it shows the ocean. Very nice. If I dial it down a little bit, maybe sound like 40%, not bad. Then I will adjust my contrast, a little bit more highlights. Even the shadows can go up a little bit. I want a bit more brighter feeling like this. I like to add a little bit of clarity. It gives this crispy feeling to the car, especially. I like this metallic feeling on the car and a little bit of grain to add some texture to the image. Not so much. And here we go. So basically, if we make a group of everything, like the basic render was this from Blender, not that much appealing. And after some generative fill and color grading, look at the difference. I really like it. And now it's super easy to change the ratio and everything of this image as well. If I just hit C for crop, I can just decide what I want. And my ratio here is the square. I pick square for Instagram, for example. And I can just extend it something like, I don't know, whatever you want. Maybe I want it to be like this. I hit enter or generate. So it will generate, like extend the image to the top and bottom. So I'm expecting like a rocky area here and a bit more sky on the top. Okay, it's not the best, honestly. I will just select this area again and say rocks on the ground. Basically the same approach we have. But honestly, I was expecting if I don't write anything, it will automatically extend what we have here in a nicer way. I'm not, I don't like this road here. Okay, that's a better one. And also here, I'm gonna just write sky with little amount of clouds on a sunny day. Let's see if we can get some clouds. Okay, it didn't give me the clouds, but it's fine. I'm already happy with the results. So now we have the Instagram version square format. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are watching this on YouTube and if you are interested in Blender or AI or Photoshop, any of these softwares in a detailed way, you can find both beginner and advanced courses on my website, bergkaplan.com. See you on the next video. And if you are watching this already in the course, I hope you enjoyed. Let's continue rest of the course.